Give us a break. Don't try what you're about to see at home. Little disposable lighters come with a long what? list of warnings. Never puncture or put in fire. Never exposed to heat above 120 degrees Fahrenheit or to prolonged sunlight. So I believe that each one of these items is here because probably of a specific lawsuit, but each one of them also is a test that we can do. So I got one for you. Okay, what is it? A lighter is sitting on a dash of a hot car, and it explodes. We've done tons of hot car stuff, and that is perfect. The question would be, how hot can they get, and would that make a lighter potentially fatally explode? Yeah, they get pretty hot in there. Let's do it. All right. This time, instead of heating up an entire car, Jamie has an oh-so-convenient alternative. OK, Adam, I got the toaster oven. That's our car? That's our car. That's perfect. This isn't exactly a dash of a car, but it is a controllable thing that we can get to the correct temperature. Dashes of cars actually get surprisingly hot. They get up around 180 degrees, give or take. So we should be able to set this at that temperature put a lighter in there and see what happens. In goes the passenger. Now it's another stupefyingly boring Mythbusters wake fest. You get to watch it all just happen. You're going to cut to the explosion inside of five minutes, but I've got to wait for like three hours. A stupefyingly boring hour later, the heat hasn't affected the lighter at all. It's been at 140 degrees for that entire hour, and I'm not getting anything. So I'm going to ramp it up. He dials up the temperature. It's climbing. The toaster oven is now at 190 degrees. Adam and his little nemesis are having a standoff. It's just a waiting game, and it's exhausting. I've been working on this for three hours now, and I still don't have what we're looking for here, a catastrophic failure of a lighter in a hot car. Even at the highest temperature the dash of a car could ever get, the lighter still hasn't lost its cool. But Jamie is confident he can put Adam out of his misery. I can get this thing up to about 500. I know my toaster oven. 500 degrees? That's hot. Now we're up to 350 on our way to 400. This shouldn't take long. In fact, I can already see the cracks forming. Oh! Well, that was an explosion. <laughs> no fire, but... That was a bang. Ooh. <laughs> Actually, there was fire. Jamie got the lighter to blow in just five minutes. This end piece shot out like a bullet and actually blew a hole in the tray. How about another, just for the heck of it? You got your flame. <laughs> yeah. It sure looks cool, but in the real world, cars don't get that hot. The minimum temperature that we were able to get one of these lighters to melt to the point that it released its gas was about 350 degrees. And I don't know of any cars that get into 350 degrees, even in the desert in the summer. So as far as I'm concerned, it's not happening unless there's something else at play. So to recap, we get Bupkis out of the dryer. We got nice explosions out of the golf club hot car and the welder. Yeah, but uh, these myths are about whether or not this is a lethal situation. And we don't know what kind of injuries you'd sustain. We don't really know whether it's lethal or not. Right. Well, I mean, that leads to the next step here, which is to get a human analog and try out the most common one, the welding, on that human analog and see if the explosion of the lighter next to it causes any, any visible or significant damage. Pork. Yeah, I suppose it's more pork. I like a pork butt. <laughs> Adam and Jamie attach a welder to a C-stand and put a steel plate in front of it. Wait, 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 wait. Next, they dress a ham hock in working man's overalls and put a lighter in the pocket. Now, that's one rugged bore. All right. What will be very telling about the level of damage is if we get a, like, and all of a sudden the whole area is bathed in flame. Right. In three, two, one. The hot slag drips onto the jeans, and about 15 seconds later, they catch fire. 
That would seem like more than blue jeans just burning there. <laughs> I would imagine. But even though the denim is flaming, the lighter doesn't pop. We got some burns in our that pig. Was only from the welding. Yeah, that's only from the welding slide. They reposition it and try again. You got a working lighter and the vertical pocket this time. Three, two, one. Hey, that was quicker. Yeah, that was a lot quicker. Now you're starting to hop around. You're like, geez, oh my god, ah, shoot, dude, pull me out. Once again, your favorite jeans would never be the same. But you would walk away to weld another day. Again, I think it's a hot metal burn, but not a lighter burn. And these just aren't exploding. Yeah. They're slowly releasing their gas. That ball of flame, it just goes kind of poof. And unless you're wearing plastic clothing like polyester or something like that, it's not going to go up in flame. It's going to deflect most of it. Looks like the guys have extinguished this myth. Meanwhile, over at M5, Jamie and Adam have been testing disposable lighters. Are these tiny tykes potential life threats? I don't care what anybody says. The explosion from one of these lighters is not lethal, and that makes all of these myths, at least in terms of deadliness, busted. Well, that was a single lighter. We just need more. We have this thing from a British newspaper that says a salesman's car burst into flames in Brussels when liquid gas in 500 cigarette lighters exploded in the hot sun. Let me see this. That's, that's, that, you just read the whole article. I mean, there's not much to go on here. It's right down our alley. I guess we don't need any more information than this. All right, let's do it. <laughs> the plan is to get a car and put a heating element and 500 lighters inside. As the lighters melt and release their gas, the guys will trigger a remote ignition source, and hopefully the vehicle will take a trip skywards. So where better to conduct this potentially highly flammable myth than at a water control plant? Good. And who better to have on hand than the city of South San Francisco Fire Department? Howdy, guys. How are you? How are you? Adam explains the setup to the guys. As long as you don't blow up the city, we're fine with it. So. That's always our goal, controlled explosions. And this one should be, well, we're hoping it's major, but even if it's major, it's still pretty minor. Yep, there's some major insight into the workings of the Mythbusters' mind right there. Adam positions the vehicle chosen for the sacrifice in a high-walled concrete bunker. That ought to do. Then he fills up the interior with 500 disposable lighters, stacking them in rows. When all this is expanded, this is over a 1,000 cubic centimeters of butane gas. Just for flavor, like a spice. A series of holes are drilled into the top of the car and wire inserted through it. Then the heat source, a vacuum-form machine, is raised above the lighters. A vacuum form is normally used to make molded plastic packaging and gets up to a scorching 800 degrees. And just in case the vacuum form doesn't ignite the gas, they have a backup plan. In trying to hedge our bets, we're trying to create a flame bar. Ignition will occur at the start with a neon transformer that will create a spark. That spark will ignite a gasoline-soaked rope, which will travel down inside the car. This rope will continue to burn down to the point where it sets off the ignition. Climate is clear. Ready to initiate the Everyone and everything is in position and ready to blow. Coming right up. 